Another day, another reason to blame video games, because it's easy, and it's popular. I think it's sort of the trend, really. Back in the 80s and whatnot, it was rock music that was blamed for people doing wacky shit, or the degeneration of the children is because of... Twisted sister, D. Snyder is wearing women's panties. My son is crazy as shit because of Stay Hungry, the album. What is that? A twisted sister pin on your uniform! Now it's, uh, girls aren't doing well in math. So, video games are to blame because sexism. There you go. Globe and Mail blame sexism in video games for girls not doing well in math tests. So there you go. Because some of those characters in Texan are kind of cute. That's why your daughter's not good at math. Get out of here, Laura Croft, with your latent sexuality that is well hidden under those clothes and there's nothing sexual about you, but it's too sexy, you're there. Maybe if little girls watch the new uh, She-Ra cartoons, they'll do better in math. That should help. Called She-Ra. They said she would return to us in the hour of our greatest need. There's something you should know. Horde soldier! I know you have no reason to trust me, but I'm ready to fight to stop the Horde. The Rebellion accepts your allegiance. She-Ra, princess of power. That's the coolest name I've ever heard. No! No! Mmm, I already feel my math skills improving. Two plus two equals social justice. It'll all balance out, am I right? Now this came from the Globe and Mail article that was published on November 27th of 2018. It was entitled, How Video Gaming is Helping Boys Land Better Careers and Hurting Girls. Yep. <laughs> I guess I got nothing for this. It's some of the dumbest shit I've ever seen. The article extrapolates the social justice warrior agenda from research in labor economics reported by Nicole Fortin and Yan Algen. It states that playing video games could help lead to higher test scores for STEM related subjects and that this could be attributed with boys who perform better in STEM fields than girls. It's also found that girls score several percentages lower on math tests than boys, and that up to a third of the results for boys could be attributed to daily multiplayer gaming. Let's see. Problem solving, working with people, and dealing with situations like someone insulting you and calling you a homosexual, forcing you to get on with it. Hmm. Or phone games. Or slot games. Dance Dance Revolution. That should really help you deal with the undesirables of the world. <laughs> Tony Chestnut knows I love you. I will, baby. Yes. <laughs> the Globe and Mail's Dara Hassan attributed this correlative discrepancy to sexism in video games, according to Hassan. There is a catch, though. It's only teenage boys who benefit from intense daily gaming interactions, which enhance their player coordination, visual spectral, and problem-solving skills, all potential pathways to leading to higher math scores according to the study. Teen girls, meanwhile, appear to suffer from elements in the gaming world that act to deter their full potential, including sexist or sexualized female character depictions. One thing I noticed about these studies that constantly attack video games for the usual sexualization of female characters trope they keep pounding into the goddamn ground that really isn't what it used to be. And gaming has changed a great deal. Notice how they never complain about Twitch dots. Basically taking the Twitch platform and turning it into chatterbait light, essentially. There's never any study of these, like, PhDs or these doctors or whatever the fuck sitting there going, Hmm, there seems to be a problem with women sexualizing themselves on a platform that was designed by gamers in an attempt to exploit money from very lonely dudes because nobody gives a shit. And it's a damn crime. Now I'm back to your regularly scheduled bullshit. And harassment from other players online. Yeah, as if guys don't get harassed. I'm pretty sure I just did a re video recently where a man, a full grown man, mind you, an adult man, was harassed so viciously by teenage boys he had to directly tweet to bethesda and ask for help to report them which resulted in these boys being banned from the game because they're too toxic and it was hate speech oh, godfather i don't know what to do i don't know what to do you can act like a man what's the matter with you 
Is this how you turn down a Hollywood Pinocchio that uh, cries like a woman? But, according to this article, only women ever experience harassment online. When it's just guys, we're all really friendly with each other. We never say anything mean or hurtful. Now, if you are willing to cherry pick, stretch the truth a bit, suppress counter evidence, you can easily make it seem like women are the have-nots in our society. You point to the wage gap, the glass ceiling. You focus on women's vulnerability to body shaming, sexual objectification, mansplaining, manspreading, street harassment, intimate partner violence. And before long, you will have constructed a full-scale patriarchy. And we have hundreds of women's groups who do just that. They specialize in persuading us that Venus is victimized and Mars is privileged. Well, here's the problem. Women's advocacy groups tend to exaggerate the plight of Venus and ignore the troubles of Mars. And as I've tried to show in earlier segments of this series, most of the standard feminist injustice statistics are exaggerated or just plain wrong. It's not true that women are being cheated out of 23% of their salaries or that one in five will be victims of sexual assault. And it's also the case that in many critical domains, women are faring far better than men. Let's consider a few. Take education. There, it is women who are the privileged sex at every level of education, from preschool to graduate school. And across ethnic and class lines, women get better grades, they win most of the honors and prizes, and they're far more likely to go to college. Today, women earn a majority of bachelor's degrees and advanced degrees. Our schools do a much better job educating women than men. Now, the angry gamer immediately refutes this by talking about a data report conducted on behalf of Fort Madison Games. Females are not deterred from engaging with interactive entertainment. They just don't engage in the same kind of interactive entertainment as males. This is obvious. I remember my girlfriend at the time, I tried to get her to play Fallout 4. She then sat in it for five minutes and said, no, I don't like this. Not for the correct reasons. She said, I don't like this game because there's too much freedom and I have to make choices for myself. I don't like that. And I'm just like, what's wrong with some sort of freedom? What's wrong with doing your own thing? Going out and just getting into what the fuck ever. She's like, no, there needs to be structure. I need to know where I'm going and what I'm supposed to do. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. In fact, a majority of females who took part in the survey admitted that they played games. However, 93% of them played casual games like slots. Now, if you click the link provided by the Angry Gamer, it takes you to another article that's just too funny. I'm not even going to get into it. Female CEO feels the future of gaming is female. So they're making gambling games. Ah, future so bright, I got to wear shades. Am I right? But if you say that, if you say that women like phone games 90% of the time, you will be labeled as a sexist by games journalism. And if you don't like mobile games, not only will you be labeled as a sexist, but you're a misogynist who hates women because you don't like mobile games as a man. Frankly, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't in today's weird ass climate. The article continues, so while 40% of females may play games, they aren't playing the same games as guys. This is an oftentimes reiterated point that often gets overlooked, whitewashed in research points. And that is very true. Anyone who's paid attention to this stuff, even if you watch something like the Factual Feminist, she herself will speak about how often these organizations, these study groups, or even the average feminist will look for information that's skewed directly in their favor to make a problem seem more dire than it actually is and to paint it as they're more oppressed than they actually are. It's depressing, really. It makes you just, I don't know, man. It makes you wonder, what's the point of anything if everything's so full of shit? You know what I'm saying? Oh, that reminds me of something Buddy Cole once said. Buddy, he'd say, the world's so full of crap, why bother wiping your ass? My God, the man was a sage. As noted in multiple reports, barely 10% of female gamers have interest in shooter games. <laughs> yeah. I've only dated one girl that was a gamer that actually likes shooter games. I tried like hell to get her to marry me. All right, I didn't try like hell. I tried like hell to hang on to her when she tried to leave. Because it's hard to find a, a girl gamer that's actually good at a shooter game that's willing to spot you as a sniper. Ah, oh well. 
often female gamers veer away from competitive games. Mm, what a shock. You know, it reminds me of that Bully Hunter's opening. A report from the Delta DNA also noted that 61% of female gamers prefer social slot games where they can play casual titles and interact with other players, while 82% of female gamers prefer puzzle games. You know what's weird? I knew this a married dude. His wife used to love puzzle games. He said she spent a crazy amount of money on that shit. Wish I could give his name. Oh, while well, we continue on, Hassan wrote, and I quote, Despite the study results, Dr. Fortin says she isn't suggesting parents encourage their girls to spend more time gaming. Gaming culture prioritizes male heroic characters rather than females. And when game characters do appear, they are often sexualized, she says. Many girls who play computer games also face harassment in the gaming community at times. It's vicious. Once again, they always ignore the fact that harassment in online social games happens to everyone. The thing is, the fact that it happens to everyone, no matter what the hell your problem is, is what makes these people all up in arms. Gaming online, it doesn't matter if you're cripple. It doesn't matter if you have flipper hands. Like there's this guy who was playing like a uh, Street Fighter, right? And he had flipper hands. He was a flipper baby. And uh, kids in the hall reference, but for real, he was. He beat low tier God in like Street Fighter, right? You know what low tier God did? Started ripping on him for being fucking cripple. <laughs> like, that's online gaming as a whole. It doesn't matter. People will rip your asshole to shreds if you let them. Oh, your mother's gay, you half a fag. You'll hear that. Oh, what, you're blind in one eye, you dumb bastard? Why don't you get off this and take your glass eye someplace else? Oh, your girlfriend likes to screw other guys while you're playing the game? How do you know? Because my friend just sent me a picture of her getting fucked by this dude. Oh, you didn't even know you had a bad relationship, loser. Maybe you spent time with your girlfriend, you'd be better at the game. That's the sort of stuff you hear. So when women come in, instead of it being the usual society standard, where like a chick comes into a situation and everyone's immediately nicer to her because she's a woman. Oh, let me hold the door for you. Oh, can I help you with anything? Oh, you look lovely today. Those are nice shoes. How are you? You know, the stuff women are used to. You know, they post on Instagram and immediately are just full of positive messages from dudes all over the world. You know, like, I can't wait till I meet my perfect guy because I'm a princess. And all these dudes pop up. You're so amazing. I can tell by looking at your soul. You're this beautiful entity. In online gaming, no one gives a fuck. You come in there, and if you aren't immediately good or you aren't funny, guess what, little babies? You're eating shit sandwiches until you toughen up or get the fuck out. That's how it works. Video gaming is like a New York bar. And it's open mic night and you think you got a great comedy set. And reality comes in real fast. I would never buy any product that have been tested on animals. Never. Because I like to do that myself at home. Make sure the control group is isolated. This lady wants me. I can totally tell. I know I'm weird. I'm a weird dude. I used to always carry a man purse, a merse. What I love about the angry gamers, it looks at this stuff and talks about these things in a way that other news medias won't. Kotaku would look at this story and post it and make it a fluff piece. The angry gamer presents it in a way it should be presented as a pile of bullshit. The gaming culture has been prioritizing female characters in recent years after culture critic Anita Sarkeesian slash charlatan who takes people's money, 40 grand to make a discord. Okay, 35 grand, I'll be fair launched an all-out war on gaming since 2012. I think her war is kind of ending because people are waking up to she's a bullshit artist. So now, like, no one really cares what she has to say. So she just makes random-ass tweets <laughs> out of nowhere about people. And this article is fucking perfectly right. He nails it on the head. Wolfenstein Young Bloods. It has two female lead characters. The Last of Us 2. Female lead character. Tomb Raider has been completely rebooted. Uh, what else is there? Horizon Zero Dawn. Shit. It's hard to think because I spend all my time being angry at the gaming industry that it's very little that I find enjoyable these days. Dishonored 2 had a female DLC. She was a lead character. A black chick with one eye. And there's nothing sexualized about him. So it makes me wonder what the real deal is. 
And actually, if I think about it now, in all honesty, most likely this stuff is written by people who aren't really up on the gaming culture. They don't really pay attention to what's going on in gaming. Overwatch, for instance. Look at how many female characters is in that shit. Every time you turn around, it'll be like three to four new female characters in Overwatch before you get one male character. For real. Like hell, the robot, Bob, with that new chick, Ash, or whatever the hell her name is. It's a male robot, or at least it seems to be male. Hopefully I don't trigger people with uh, gender identity issues that identify as robots, but they're gender neutral. I don't fucking know. And even when they showed that up, the, the male robot is her assistant and only shows up in an alt. And even when they show her, they're already letting you know that there's going to be a female support robot that will heal people. So, so there you go. It's another female character already. You got two in a row. When's the next male character? Nobody cares. And also, there's a ton of games that released where you can choose the gender of your character. The Dragon Age comes to mind. The new Assassin's Creed. I believe the female character is actually the canon character and the male one is optional. So what the fuck is with this article? And the sad fact of the matter is the gaming industry has been twisting itself into shapes to sort of get away from sexism towards women and making more bold female character leads when in all actuality, most women don't play these sort of games. It's such a small knit group, but you know, what the fuck ever, right? And yeah, look what happened to Battlefield 5. Look how they shoehorned in women. <laughs> and not just any, they had a disabled woman in the tray. Like, really? They even rewrote parts of history in Battlefield 5. The Norwegian Commandos written out. It wasn't done by a group of brave men. It was done by one teenage girl. Girl power. You know, like, what the fuck? It is, yeah, uh, fuck this sort of shit, man. Every time I turn around, for some reason... It's just this sort of wacky shit. The gaming industry is being twisted into this politically correct mess. And I almost wonder, will gaming companies learn from this? If you continuously pander to people not buying anything, we're not going to buy it either. You know, we're not obligated to support you. As Batman said to Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins. Do what is necessary. I won't kill you. You can't go shitting on the fan base and expect to walk clean. Gaming was so much better years ago. Oh my God, I stretched this out. Shit, man. I just want to make a 10 minute video or less. Why is it impossible for me? I'm going to get the hell out of here. I've wasted enough of your time today. You know my whole spiel, man. Rate, comment, subscribe, only if so choose to, if not to hell with it. Because I can't ask anyone to give more of a shit than me in the age of apathy. But for those of you that do... You only make me louder in this fledgling industry that I honestly feel is collapsing in on itself. If the gaming industry isn't destroyed by its sheer greed and constantly trying to make more money every year and diluting their IPs, as well as only releasing proven hit games instead of coming up with new intellectual properties, new ways of gaming, new ways of playing, then it'll surely be destroyed by the constant culture war that it seems to find itself embroiled in. This never-ending attempt to cater to people who are basically political in a spectrum that needs no politicizing, in my opinion, even though I said that incorrectly. There shouldn't be a culture war in gaming. It should just be gaming, in my personal opinion. But then again, maybe I'm out of date, a relic of the past. An undying shadow in the world of light, as Gray Fox said before me.